morning. It is t good to see everybody this morning. Welcome, welcome, welcome. If you want to grab a seat, it is time to get started. Uh, for those of you who do not know me, uh, my name is Shannon Jackson. I'm the preaching minister here, and we are so glad uh, that you are here with us this morning. Uh, if you're visiting, you are an honored guest, and we are so thankful that you chose to be here because we know you could be uh, anywhere uh, this morning to worship. So we're glad that you, uh, you've you decided to be here with us. I want to encourage you this morning to do a couple of things for us, if you don't mind. Uh, and that is to fill out one of the connection cards uh, in front of you. Uh, there is a physical card that you can fill out and drop in the collection plate. Uh, or uh, there is a QR code that you can scan with your phone. And you can fill out that information online. It'll be sent to the church office. Just gives us an opportunity and a way to connect with you. Uh, and then the other thing that's important is we want you to make yourself at home this morning uh, because you're with family. And so we just want you to, to, to feel safe and secure. Just uh, sit back, relax, and enjoy our time together uh, in worship this morning. Uh, a couple of things really quickly as we uh, get ready to begin. Uh, the, there is the opportunity for you to be blessed in the foyer this morning. There are still some slots for helpers in our Bible classes. Um, and so... Pick your spot now while you can. Don't miss out on that opportunity. Um, you know, you'd be in a classroom helping, uh, and so uh, sign up for that. There's an opportunity to do that. Uh, in order to do that, though, this is I, I think this is good across the board uh, for anybody that's going to be helping with our teens uh, or in our Bible classes. Uh, there is a mandatory background check that has to be done, uh, and the form for that is in the foyer. If you will fill that form out uh, and either give it to myself or Jared Chamberlain. Oh, hey, okay, listen, dude, y'all got to stop moving spots. Everybody next week needs to be in your assigned seats, okay? I, just looking around for people. Uh, Jared is right here. Annalisa is right there. She'll take it as well. Uh, but if you'll fill out that form and get it to one of us uh, so that we can get you cleared to work with our kids, uh, it's, it's simply for two reasons. One, most importantly, uh, it's for safety of our kids. Uh, and two, uh, insurance is, while they have said it is not mandatory, they have strongly, strongly emphasized the need to get that done. Um, all right, finally this morning, uh, for those of you who are not cool enough, uh, you can find your way into this club. Uh, Vince, you want to stand up? No. Please. Uh, those of you that you know want to be in the club, Vince and I will tell you how to get into it. Um, <laughs> Pure accident. Is that not crazy? Pure accident. I almost wore a different shirt this morning, too. I was like, I'm going to wear a long sleeve one. Do what? That would have been a mistake. Yeah, it would have been a mistake. So, uh, anyway, uh, Ryan is leaving us in worship this morning, so I'd invite you to stand, hug a neck quickly around, hug a neck around you quickly, uh, welcome people, and uh, as, as Ryan comes to lead us in worship this morning. Good morning. Let us sing. Greatest time to get in your seat. <laughs> All right. There's a message true and glad for the sinful and the sad. Ring it out. Ring it out. It will give them courage new. It will help them to be true. Ring it out. Ring it out. Ring out the word for land and sea. Still far from Jesus, many live in. 
in sin and doubt. Bring out the news that makes man free to all the lost of every nation. Bring it out. Tell the world of saving grace, make it known in every place. Bring it out. Bring it out. Help the needy ones to know him from whom all blessings flow. Bring it out. Bring it out. Bring out the word for land and sea. Still far from Jesus, many live in sin and doubt. Bring out the news that makes man free. To all the lost of every nation, bring it out. Sin and doubt to sweep away till shall dawn the better day. Bring it out, bring it out. Till the sinful world be one for Jehovah's mighty son. Bring it out, bring it out. Bring out the word for land and sea. Still far from Jesus, many live in sin and doubt. Bring out the news that makes men free. To all the lost of every nation, bring it out. Good morning. Thank you for the wonderful singing. You can be seated, please. After this next song, we will be led in our opening prayer by Brother Warren Roan. Sing to me of heaven, sing that song of peace. From the toils that bind me, it will bring release. Burdens will be lifted that are pressing so. Showers of great blessing o'er my heart will flow. Sing to me of heaven, let me fondly dream of its golden glory, of its pearly gleam. Sing to me when shadows of the evening fall. Sing to me of heaven, sweetest song of all. Sing to me of heaven as I walk alone. Dreaming of the comrades that the long have gone. In a fairer region among the angel throng. They are happy as they sing that old sweet song. Sing to me of heaven, let me fondly dream of its golden glory, of its pearly gleam. Sing to me when shadows of the evening fall. Sing to me of heaven's sweetest song of all. Sing to me of heaven tenderly and low till the shadows o'er me rise and swiftly go. When my heart is weary, when the day is long, sing to me of heaven, sing that old sweet song. Sing to me of heaven, let me fondly dream of its golden glory, of its pearly gleam. Sing to me when shadows of the evening fall, 
Sing to me of heaven's sweetest song of all. You bow with me, please. Blessed are you, O Lord God, King of the universe. Father, we come before you not because of anything that we have done, but because of the merits of Jesus. So in his name, we come before you offering this prayer, Father. We recognize that even though you are king over all, you are also our father. And we thank you for that privilege of calling you father. Holy, holy, holy are you, Lord God Almighty. We ask that all people may consider your name holy today and that your name will be glorified in this assembly. Father, we ask that your kingdom will come in the hearts of all people, that they may recognize you as sovereign Lord, and that that everyone, that we all may do your will and acknowledge you as king, because you are always recognized as king in heaven, and you are always obeyed. Father, we ask today for our daily bread, help us to recognize that with food and shelter, we can be content. Father, forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Father, help us to recognize how much we've received grace and mercy from you, and help us to extend that grace and mercy to others. Father, keep us from evil things. Give us the heart to be holy as you are holy. And now to you who are able to do far more exceedingly than all we can ask or think. According to the power at work, Father, to you be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations, both now and forever. Amen. He bore it all. My precious Savior suffered pain and agony. He bore it all that I might live. He broke the bonds of sin and set the captive free. He bore it all that I might live. He bore it all that I might see his shining face. Really bore it all. I with him might live, I stood condemned to die, but Jesus took my place, he bore it all that I might live. They placed a crown of thorns upon my Savior's head, he bore it, really bore it all. I with him might live by cruel man with spear, his side was pierced and bled, he bore it all that I might live with all. And as he say his shining face, he bore it all that I might live. I stood condemned to die, but Jesus my place, he bore it all that I might live. Up Calvary's hill in shame, the blessed Savior trod, he bore it all that I might live. Between two thieves they crucified by the Son of God, he bore it all that I might live. Jesus bore it all. See his shining face. He bore it all that I might live. I stood condemned to die, but Jesus built my place. He bore it all that I might live. Heaven came down. Oh, what a wonderful, wonderful day, day I will never forget. After I'd wandered in darkness away, Jesus, my Savior, I met. Oh, what a tender, compassionate friend. 
He met the need of my heart. Shadows dispelling with joy I am telling. He made all the darkness depart. Heaven came down and glory filled my soul. When at the cross the Savior made me whole. My sins were washed away and my night was turned to day. Hey, heaven came down and glory filled my soul born of the spirit with life from above into god's family divine jesus fully through calvary's love oh what a standing is mine and the transaction so quickly was made when as a sinner i came took of the offer of grace he did proffer he saved me oh praise his dear name heaven came down and glory filled my soul when at the cross the savior made me whole my sins were washed away and my night was turned to day hey heaven came down and glory filled my soul now i have a hope that will surely endure after the passing of time I have a future in heaven for sure, there in those mansions sublime. And it's because of that wonderful day when at the cross I believe. Riches eternal and blessings supernal from his precious hand I receive. Heaven came down and glory filled my soul when at the cross the savior made me whole my sins were washed away and my night was turned to day hey heaven came down and glory filled my soul All right. the next song that we will be singing is he lives and it'll be before our communion led by brother howie trim i serve a risen savior he's in the world today i know that he is living whatever men may say I see his hand of mercy, I hear his voice of cheer, and just the time I need him, he's always near. He lives, he lives, Christ Jesus lives today. He walks with me and talks with me along life's narrow way. He lives, he lives, salvation to impart. You ask me how I know he lives. He lives within my heart. Well, that's a different song. That is a different song. I almost started on that one. That is okay. Go ahead, Trent. You wanted more. Good morning, church. It's great to be here to worship my father, to be with family. think about word and song and prayer I 
this is a special time. Um, thank you, Ryan, for those songs, too. He bore it all. Can't think of a f more fitting song. Heaven came down, and he lives. God needs nothing from us, but he wants our love and our reverence. During our worship, he... Uh, wants us to long for his presence in our thoughts, in our hearts, in our everyday lives, but especially during this time. I don't know where I'd be without that sacrifice that Jesus did for me. Um, pretty sure I'd be without hope. I'd be in a total state of loss. Um, it seems to ask very little for me not to show reverence, not to clear my heart, not to clear my mind, and remember what he did. Also, as a father, I can't imagine what was going through our father, the emotion that he had as he watched this being done to his son, as he watched him being spat upon, as he watched him being beaten, and then he watched him being nailed to a cross in the most brutal, shameful fashion. And even after he had been nailed to that cross, they spat upon him, and they mocked him, and he still looked down on us with love. I think back on a time that Kaylee, my daughter, she was her first, Gail and I. I remember when she was a little girl, she was playing hide-and-go-seek at her great-grandmother's house, and she got in. She hid. She actually hid, and some prickly pears <laughs> and she came inside and had all these stickers in her and I had to hold her down Gail and I both and we had to pluck each one of those out of her out of her back out of her legs out of her arms and I can remember her saying please daddy stop please please I wonder if God had that same feeling um, in Matthew 36, when Jesus prays in the Garden of Gethsemane, it says, Then Jesus went with them to a place called Gethsemane, and he said to his disciples, Sit here while I go over there and pray. And taking with him Peter and the two sons of Zebedee, he began to be sorrowful and troubled. Then he said to them, My soul is very sorrowful, even to death. Remain here with me. Watch with me. And I'm going a little bit further. I, and I'm going a little bit farther. He fell on his face and prayed, saying, My father, is it possible? Let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not as I will, but as you will. Let's go to our Lord in prayer. Your most gracious and heavenly Father, we humbly bow before you. Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for the ability to come here and worship your name. We thank you, Father, for the way you love us, even when we're not lovable, Father. But most of all, we're thankful for the sacrifice of your Son at the cross so that we would have the hopes to stand in your near presence someday. Father, as we take this bread, may we do so with a heart that's right, a mind that's clear of all other things and truly devoted to remembering your son. For it's in his precious name we pray. Amen.
in that same chapter, Matthew 26, starting in verse 69, it says, Now Peter was sitting outside the courtyard, and a servant girl came up to him and said, You also were with Jesus, the Galilean. But he denied it before them all, saying, I do not know what you mean. And when he went out the entrance, another servant girl saw him, and she said to the bystanders, This man was with Jesus of Nazareth. And again he denied it with an oath. I do not know the man. After a little while, the bystanders came up and said to Peter, Certainly you too are one of them, for your accent betrays you. Then he began to invoke a curse on him and to swear, I do not know the man. And immediately the rooster crowed, and Peter remembered them, the saying, Jesus, or the saying of Jesus, Before the rooster crows, you will deny me three times. And he went out and wept bitterly. I asked myself, how often was this me? Kind of ashamed of that. How often do I put worldly things before my Savior? But he loves me anyway. Let's go to our Lord in prayer for the cup. Your most gracious and heavenly Father, again, we, we bow before you. What an awesome God you are. Thank you for your love, Father, your unending love, that no matter where we're at, no matter how far we go, no matter what kind of mess we're in, you look at us and tell us you love us. Thank you for your son, Father. Praise his name for going to the cross. May we take this cup again in a manner that is worthy of reverence and respect. For it's in his precious son, your, your precious son's name we pray. Amen.
this is a time that we've set aside to give a portion back to the church. Um, of course, if you're visiting with us, we don't expect you to do that. But what we would like for you to do, there's a card behind each seat. I think they have a QR co code on them, or you can fill them out and put that in the offering plate. We would love to get to know you if you're visiting with us, and that, that's a, a good way for us to do so. Um, also, stick around after church um, and uh, visit and uh, fellowship with others. Let's go to our Lord in prayer for the offering. Father, you have blessed us beyond measure. You provide for us in every way. Father, as we give a portion of that back to you, may our hearts be free of any selfish desires. Give us, give us a heart that, that uh, is willing, uh, a mind that is willing. Father, also as we use these funds to further glorify your name, I pray that uh, we can do so in a manner that's worthy manner that's pleasing to you father god uh god us god the leadership god the, the flock and and doing doing so father for it's in your precious son's name we pray amen I haven't been drinking. I did get a head rush, though. Uh, it's time for Children's Corner. We're going to switch this morning and do Children's Corner over here. So you want to come on down? Good morning, everybody. Y'all need this? There you go. All right. Shh. Shh, 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 Fisher. Here. Thank you. All right, y'all ready? Okay, how many of you, William? What's up, William? Oh, man. How many of you this morning, okay, y'all listen, shh. If I told you some good news, like, Mr. Shannon has a lifetime supply of ice cream to share with everybody. How many of you would tell your friends? You would tell your friends that I was willing to share ice cream? All right, that's good news, right? What if I told you that Mr. Shannon had a limitless bank account, a bank account that had money that was just constantly always there and I was going to share it with everybody. How many of you would tell your friends that I was going to share that money? Hey, Fisher, I need y'all to listen. How many of y'all would tell your friends you're going to share that money? That I was going to share that money. How many of you would want me to share the money with you? Oh, that's good. Okay. That's good. Yeah, I bet you'd want some money. Yeah. 
You'll listen now when I say I'm going to share money. I'm not going to really share it, but there, because it all belongs to Miss Dana. But what if I told you good news of I love you and I love everybody? How many of you go tell your friends, Mr. Shannon loves you? Okay, some of you wouldn't. That's okay. What about the best news of all? And this is real news. That Jesus loves you and loves everybody. How many of you would go and tell people that Jesus loves them? We all would, right? Because that is the best news ever. That Jesus loves us and that Jesus did what for us? What did he do for us? Hey, guys, sit down, please. Sit down, please. Thank you. What, what did he do for us? He died for us, right? As an expression of his love to let us know how much he loved us, Jesus died for us. Now, did he just die for just the people in this room? No. Who did he die for? The whole world. Everybody, the whole world. That's right, Baker. Jesus died for everybody. That means that Jesus died for everybody in this room. That means Jesus died for everybody not in this room. Died for everybody. And that is a message that God wants us to share with other people, right? And so this morning during our sermon, we're going to talk about sharing this message of good news, right? That Jesus loves us, that Jesus died for us, and that it is a message not just for those in the room, but it is something for everybody, all right? Hey, let's pray, and then you can go back and sit with mom and dad, all right? Here we go. Let's pray. Dear God, thank you so much uh, that you loved us, that Jesus loved us, and that Jesus died for us. Father, that is the best news ever. And we pray today, God, that, that we would be people that would share that news of Jesus' love and of your love and that Jesus died for us so that we could live with you. And we pray, Father, we would, we would tell everyone that we can uh, that news and message each and every day. We thank you, Father, for loving us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Nash, would you take this back to Mr. Kevin in the back for me, please? All right, you guys can go sit with your parents. It's convenient for everybody to be standing before we're led in scripture by Parker Love and before the sermon. Jesus is coming soon. Troublesome times are here, filling men's hearts with fear. Freedom we all hold dear, now is at stake. Humbling your heart to God, saves from the chastening rod. Seek the way pilgrims trod, Christians awake. Jesus is coming soon, morning or night or noon. Many will meet their doom, trumpets will sound. All of the dead shall rise, righteous meet in the skies, going where no one dies, heavenward found. Love of so many cold, losing their home, the gold. This isn't God's own word, this is the found. When these signs come to pass, nearing the end at last, it will come very fast, trumpets will sound. Jesus is coming soon, morning or night or noon, many will meet their doom, trumpets will sound. All of the dead shall rise, righteous meet in the skies, going where no one dies, heavenward bound. Morning. I'll be reading Mark sixteen fifteen. He said to them, Go into all the world and preach the gospel to all creation. Thank you. 
Parker, be seated. If you have your Bibles this morning, I invite you to join me in John chapter 4. That's where we'll be uh, this morning. I, I really, you know, the first day of the week, but I hope this last week you've been richly blessed, uh, that you have felt God's presence, and that the anxiety, the stress you may have dealt with, that he provided a way for you to be relieved of that. The Thursday morning I got up, went in the kitchen to take some medicine, a little congested, and after I took the medicine I realized, oh, great googly moogly, I just took the wrong medication. And normally it wouldn't stress me out, except for it was the dog's medicine. <laughs> and then I found the positive in all of that, and that I won't have to deal with ticks and fleas for the next three months. So, I'm good. Uh, how, many, how many of you have ever had important information that you did not share? And maybe it was something, you know, well, I forgot to tell that individual. I forgot to say something to them. Uh, maybe you weren't sure who to share the information with, right? Unclear about who needs to know this. Uh, maybe you didn't have time to share the information with the people that needed to be shared with. Or maybe you thought to yourself, well, really, they're not worthy to have this information or maybe we just took it upon ourselves again to decide who it should be shared with and who it doesn't need to be shared with but what if I told you every one of those questions that I just asked were reasons that I gave were reasons for not sharing the gospel with those around us because the response to that first question, everything that I gave you, I forgot or I wasn't sure, didn't have time, they weren't worthy, I decided they didn't need it, are responses that have been given for not sharing the gospel. And all of us would agree this morning that we live in a time and a culture where those reasons are not valid. They've never been valid. But also at a time where the gospel desperately needs to be shared and we've tried keeping it to ourselves. We haven't been very proactive in sharing that with them. And so we live in a time of growing darkness, but not a time of intentional taking light to them. Uh, earlier this year, several of us were able to go down to Preston Crest to uh, the Telling the Story conference, and uh, Dr. Steve Clower shared... Um, at that conference this year um, about reaching out to two different groups. Uh, and I, I talked to Dr. Clover earlier this week and asked him his, asked his permission to use some of this. And I want to share some of it with you this morning. There are two growing groups of people in our culture today that we need to pay attention to. Uh, and here's the first group. Uh, they love Jesus, but not the church. And I'm not going to go in depth on this. I'm going to share it and I'm going to move on for the sake of time. If you want more in-depth, you can find this on YouTube, at Preston Crest uh, YouTube page, uh, Dr. Steve Clower. Um, but he says that this is the group that people identify as Christians, but they do not participate in the church. That 10% of the population, according to Barner Research, identifies with this group, that they love Jesus, but they do not participate in the church. Um, and so they have either been turned off from the church because of something that happened within the church. They have fallen away because of sin in their life. Um, and they're too ashamed to go back um, and make things right. And so they just stay out of church. Uh, this is the growing trend, which is, the, as you can see it there, the currently the number one reason. They've moved to a different place and just have not made the effort to find a new church or haven't felt comfortable finding a new church. Uh, and the, the last one is the one that bothers me the most out of this group is that the church is irrelevant to today's culture. Uh, the second group that he talks about are the nuns, uh, people who claim none in terms of rel religious affiliation. 
Typically, though, uh, they are thought of as in three groups. Atheists, 6%. Agnostics, that should be 6% as well, not 65. Uh, and then nothing in particular, 20%. And that's the group that's growing, right? That's the group that people are saying, uh, I'm just not in any particular group at all. And the reason why that group is on the rise is because of the secularization of society, uh, not, em- not embarrassing to claim the nun status. Used to, years ago, you know, you, if you didn't tell anybody, well, I don't believe in anything. But now there's no big deal. It's okay. It's acceptable to say that. Uh, the Internet is a reason why. And the bottom one, politics. Uh, the next slide, Dan, on this one, so we can just keep rolling. Uh, and here's how they ended up as the nuns, right? They're too busy. Got too much to do, not enough time for Jesus. There's confusion about Jesus. There's confusion about what the church is supposed to be about, what the church is supposed to do. They're burned out. Uh, And that burnout, I'm going to to suggest, can come from a number of different directions. They're burnt out from maybe doing all the work in the church. They're burnt out arguing in the church. They're burnt out arguing about Jesus. They're burnt out about trying to, to live this way of life when they get no support and help. There's a number of reasons they could be burned out from. Those are my reasons. And then the last one, politics being combined with religious beliefs. And not just combined, but intermeshed to where you can't tell the difference between one or the other. Um, all you got to do is look at, look at the news today. Not that I have. I'm just saying as an example. And we see it left and right. Christian nationalism, where we've got to defend God by defending the flag... And church, I, I'm just going to really quickly say those are two separate issues. Two separate things with one having a greater priority over the other. And that's all I'm going to say about that. But I share that information with you this morning because we know there is an obvious need for us to take the gospel to those that are around us. To share with people, listen, the life that you see, the life that you have, there is something more to your life than just existing. That there is meaning and there is purpose and there is a life, a way of life that you're called to that brings you joy and contentment and peace. And that is a message that our culture needs to hear, not just today, but every day. And so as those numbers continue to climb in negative ways, I would ask you, where is the church? In light of the darkness that continues to swirl around us, I ask you again, where is the church? Because there are words that Jesus has spoken, there's words that Jesus has spoken to his disciples, to us. It's the words that Parker just read for us. Go into all the world. To go. Listen, it is easy for us to lose sight or lose focus of what is important in life. Even in our spiritual walk and what we're supposed to be about as God's children and as those who are involved in kingdom work. Um, and so this morning, I, I want to remind us of our mission uh, by pointing out two things that we've lost. Um, and we'll get to those in just a moment. I, just two points this morning. And don't get excited because it's still going to take the full time to get through those two. But two things that I think we've lost focus on that I think are critical to us being the people that God has called us to be and taking the message to those who are lost. Let's pray together. Uh, Father, first of all, this morning, we we come confessing that it is so easy for us to lose our focus of what we're supposed to be about, and we ask for your forgiveness. But Father, I pray this morning that you would help us, remind us of what is important to you, 
Because it's important, it should be important to us. And we know, the Father, that there are lost people around us each and every day that desperately need to know, first and foremost, that you love them. And that, Father, there is life available to them through your Son. And I pray, Father, that this faith family here would be people who would be intentional about making that life and love known to those that we're around each day. And we ask this, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. Uh, John chapter 4, look with me, verse 31. Uh, the first thing I would tell you, I think we've lost a sense, our sense of purpose. Uh, we've lost our sense of purpose. Verse 31, well, now we're in trouble. There we go. Uh, meanwhile, the disciples were urging him, saying, Rabbi, eat. But he said to them, I have food to eat that you do not know about. So the disciples said to one another, has anyone brought him something to eat? And Jesus said to them, my food is to do the will of him who sent me and to accomplish his work. There is a necessity for us to remember this morning. And that is where the heart of God lies. And the heart of God lies with those who are lost, with those who do not belong to him. And Jesus points it out for us here. He says, listen, my food, where I get substance, where I get fulfillment is in doing the will and the work of him that sent me. And it is easy for disciples to lose sight of that, right? You look back at the beginning part of John chapter 4, and what is Jesus doing in John chapter 4? He's talking to a Samaritan woman. Now, my guess is, if, if, and, and, you know, I like to read into things for the disciples. They're, they're thinking it's a waste of time. One, because she's a woman. Two, because she's a Samaritan. Jesus, we don't have time for this. We've got to get to Jerusalem. Jesus, we've got to be about doing the things that are really important. And so we need to hurry up. We don't have time for a rest stop here. Let's get moving. Let's keep going. But in Jesus' mind, the conversation that takes place with that Samaritan woman is an example and demonstration of what is important. And so he comes here in, in verse 31 and following says, listen, this is what's really important. This is the reason why I'm here. I'm not here to hurry and get somewhere. I'm not here to fulfill my own purpose. I'm here to do the work of the one who sent me. And what was that work? It's to lead people to the cross where he will die for their sins and ask them to join him in that. Jesus is here to seek the lost. And as Jesus reminds the disciples of what his purpose is, it is to be their purpose and it's also to be our purpose. Seeking the lost, reaching those who do not know the message, that you and I in this world that we live in are to be the presence of Jesus, as, as some of the songs that we listen to today, to be his hands and his feet, to be his voice, to be a presence to those who desperately need to know how loved they are. And I want to tell you this morning, you're going to hate this, but I don't care. It's not a suggestion. It's not optional for you to decide whether or not you're going to take the gospel message to other people. It is mandatory of all of Jesus' disciples. And whether that is in the form of a formal Bible study, whether that is in the form of teaching a Bible class or preaching a sermon or simply being the presence of Jesus in serving those who are in need, it is not optional. You cannot get around it. Because what it's supposed to become is it's supposed to become a way of life for us. That it's supposed to be that everywhere we go and everything we do is about making him known. And it is possible for us to do that. It is possible for you to do that in the workplace. 
It is possible for you to do that in the conversations that you have with people at grocery stores. I go into Walmart and there's people that say, hey, Shannon, how are you today? I have no clue who they are. I don't even know how they know me. And that happened a, a several months ago. I was in, I'm leaving the self-checkout line, and the guy standing there says, Shannon, good night. Have a good time. See you later. And the second time I was in there, Howie was actually with me. And the same thing happened, and I finally stopped and said, how do you know me? Well, a friend of mine told me about your church Facebook page, and so I go and listen to you on Sunday mornings. Now I got to act right. <laughs> Church, there's ever opportunity there for us to share the gospel with people if we would be intentional about sharing it. But that means we also have to be intentional in our actions and in our words and what we say, do, how we, how we live life because the gospel should become a way of life for us. The gospel is not just the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus. The gospel is the life of Jesus Christ as a whole. His life as a whole is good news because it provides an example for us of how we are to live to be pleasing to God. And the way to be pleasing to God is to do the things that he's actually asked us to do. And one of the primary things he's asked us to do is to go. And if you look at it in Matthew 28, you look at it in Mark 16, the idea of that word go is to, as you are going, preach the gospel. As you are going, make disciples. It's continuous and it never stops. We've lost our sense of purpose. But I think, too, we've lost our sense of love. Now go back and look with me, verse 27. Just then his disciples came back. They marveled that he was talking with a woman. But no one said, what do you seek or why are you talking with her? So the woman left her jar and went away into town and said to the people, come and see a man who told me all that I've ever done. Can this be the Christ? And they went out of the town and were coming to him. Skip down to verse 35. Do not say there are yet four months, then comes the harvest. Look, I tell you, lift up your eyes and see that the fields are white for harvest. Already the one who reaps is receiving the wages and gathering fruit for eternal life, so that sower and reaper may rejoice together. It's striking to me how urgent we make certain things in our life. How much of a priority they are. When they're not really that urgent at all. But we make them urgent, we make them a priority while we ignore what's truly urgent, what's really important. And you look at this woman's example in verse 27 and following. She leaves behind her water jars. Why was she at the well? This is audience participation time. Why was she at the well? To get water. And she left it behind. Why? Because there was something more important. There was something more urgent that needed to be shared than gathering water. And that is the message of the man that she met at the well. For us, we tend to wait. And I think sometimes we think, well, we've got time to reach the lost. So when, it, when, the, right, when the time is right, when we, when we feel like it, then we'll, we'll take the message to them. And the problem is we don't ever really think that way. We're more about making the excuses and the reasons of why we can't do it as opposed to actually doing it. And we've actually started just sitting back 
and we enjoy how comfortable we are in this building among other believers and sitting here safe in our own salvation without a single care or thought for the lost. I want you to listen closely. There are millions and millions of people who are dying in their sin. Millions and millions of people dying in their sin while we wait for them to come to us. Millions and millions dying in their sin because the people who should be going, the people who should be declaring, have refused to act when they could have. And here's my question. At what point do we decide to go? At what point do we say, okay, We've had enough sitting here in the comfortable. We're, we're, we've had enough sitting here safe in our own salvation. At what point do we finally decide, listen, the lost are important enough for us to go? Because while we sit here complaining about how sick things are in the world and how bad things are in the world, you and I sit here this morning with the antidote. You and I sit here this morning with the remedy, with everything that makes the world dark and sick and evil. And that is Jesus Christ. But instead of taking them what they need, we would rather sit here and judge them. We would rather sit here and criticize them. You know, it's funny how... not funny. It's amazing how God works sometimes. The, the details of this series actually started last year. Scheduling finished up at the end of last year. And it's amazing how God works to bring this message to me at this point in time. Not that he gave it to me, but you know what I mean, for, for it to be delivered at this time. Because the last two weeks have provided us a great opportunity to see just how bad things are. <clears throat> I know that you have seen or heard by now about the opening night of the Olympics. And this morning, I'm not going to enter into the debate about, the, about whether it was a mockery of the Lord's Supper or whether it was the Feast of the Gods. I'm not going to enter into that debate this morning because what I realize is it's not going to matter what I say. You've already made up your mind. What I will speak to, though, is the level of venom and hatred and calls for physical violence made against those people by people who call themselves followers of Jesus. We shouldn't be shocked that the culture mocks us, right? Jesus was mocked while he was hanging on the cross. There are people passing by him, mocking him. And what was Jesus' response? Do you remember? What was Jesus' response? Father, forgive them. The early church dealt with that. This inscription that has been found in, in multiple times. The, 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 this is one of the earliest inscriptions mocking Christianity. Do you see what that is? That's an individual hanging on a cross with a horse's head. It was an insult. It was a slap in the face. And how did the early church respond? They didn't call for violence. They didn't ridicule those people who were mocking them or mocking Jesus. 
They chose the way of Jesus. That was the response of the early church. They followed his teachings and they sought to love their enemies. Matthew chapter 5. Blessed are you when others revile you and persecute you and utter all kinds of evil against you falsely on my account. Rejoice and be glad for your reward is great in heaven. For so they persecuted the prophets who were before you. Verse 43 and 44. Verse 43 and 44. You have heard that it was said, you shall love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I say to you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you. That is the way of Jesus. And so while I say, I will say this about the Olympics opening ceremony. We can sit here and bash them. We can call them all kinds of names. And as some people posted on their social media, we can say, you guys will burn in hell. But let me remind you this morning that every single one of those individuals are people that Jesus would invite to sit at his table. That Jesus would look in the eye and say, I want you to know that I love you and I died for you. And as long as we get offended and as long as we get worked up and and we, we just blaspheme and rip those people apart, we will never see them the way that Jesus does. Ever. Because we will not reach out to those we've already determined to cast out. You and I will not make an effort to take a gospel message of hope and love to people that we have already determined will not be allowed in. We made that our call. We made that our decision, which is kind of ironic because if you go back to one of the most famous passages in all of Scripture, John 3, 16 and 17... What does John 3, 16 say? For God so loved the world that he gave his only son that whoever would believe in him, what? Will never perish but will have everlasting life. And what is Jesus' words in verse 17? For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world but to save it. That is the priority. That is the message. Judgment will come but that is not the message of today. Jesus expects us to share the gospel. That's all he expects from us. And it's not our decision to decide who's getting in or who's, getting, who's not getting in. That's Jesus' call. It's not our call to decide whether or not those people are worthy enough because the reality is you and I aren't worthy enough to hear the message. It is a message that is for all people. And church, let me just remind you this morning as we start to close. It is sinful for us to look at people through the lens of culture instead of looking through the lens of the cross. If you write that down, underline the word sinful. It is sinful for us to look at people through the lens of the culture instead of the lens of the cross. Because that's the only way for us to see them. It's the only way for us to approach them. It's through the lens of the cross. So if we've seen anything, folks, I I think we, we should be seeing a greater need of urgency. A greater need to share this message of love and hope to a world that's lost and dying. When I talked to Dr. Chloe earlier this week, I asked his permission to use something, uh, not just the information at the beginning, but something we're going to adopt here. It's gonna, you're going to hear it every Sunday. When he preached at Southside in Fort Worth, he would always say every Sunday morning, if you're a guest here this morning, you're not here by accident. You're here because God brought you here, and he brought you here for a reason. And I believe that's true. 
But what I want to add to that is, to the body, is that if you're part of the body here, you're not here by accident. God brought you here, and he brought you here for a reason. And that reason is to make his son known. So here's our challenge for us this week. The challenge for us to repent for our lack of love for God and for others. Because listen to me, if we have a lack of love for others, we have a lack of love for God. Period. And that we need to embrace our God-given purpose. There is a reason why we're here. There is a work that God calls us to. And that is to make his son and his love and the life and the hope that is in Jesus Christ known to those that are around us. And then we need to ask God to make us cross-eyed. Not cross-eyed like this, but seeing every individual and every situation through the cross. Let's pray together. Uh, Father, we're sorry. We are uh, truly sorry that we haven't been the people that loved those that you loved. And in that instant, not loving you either. Father, I pray for the hearts of those who love you and our hearts the way we treat others around us. Father, this morning, this morning, Father, we pray that your spirit would move in us to see the need Give hope to the hopeless. To light to those who are in darkness. And words of life to those who are dying. Forgive us, Father. And we pray today, Father, that just your spirit would move to change us. To be more like Jesus. Father, we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Ryan is going to lead us in our invitation song this morning. And if you're here uh, with any need at all, we want to encourage you to come and to share that as we stand and as we sing together. I'm in the way, the bright and shining way. I'm in the glory land way. Telling the world that Jesus saves today. Yes, I'm in the glory land way. I'm in the glory land way. I'm in the glory land way. Heaven is nearer and the way grow with clearer for. I'm in the glory land way. List to the call, the gospel call today. Get in the glory land way. Wonders come home, oh, hasten to obey, for I'm in the glory land way. I'm in the glory land way. I'm in the glory land way. Heaven is nearer and the way grow with clearer for I'm in the glory land.
Disneyland way. Onward I go, rejoicing in his love. I'm in the glory land way. Soon I shall see him in that home above. Oh, I'm in the glory land way. I'm in the glory land way. I'm in the glory land way. Heaven is nearer and the way grow with clearer for. I'm in the glory land way. It has been a great Sunday. Thank you, Shannon, for the lesson. It's, uh, I enjoy working in the office during the week and uh, being able to spend time with him and uh, just you know, bounce thoughts back and forth. And uh, his heart on the, and this message was, it was, in, it was good to see during the week and then to be able to hear it uh, here this morning. But uh, it's been a great Sunday. Visitors, we're glad that you're here. Uh, please stick around. Let us get to know you. Uh, after this, we'll have a closing song and a closing prayer. But uh, be able to stick around. Let us get to know you. Hug your neck. Take you out to lunch. Oh, yeah. And next week, come back next week. Thank you. I was like trying to read lips. I'm, I have selective hearing, I think is what that's called. Um, but uh, come back next week because uh, next week is ice cream. Um, so there, there is ice cream Sunday next Sunday. Um, and uh, but be sure to come back for that. But uh, as you leave today, there's a gift for you back in the back in the foyer for you visitors. But a few announcements: homeless ministry, those school uniform donations, those are due today. It's not too late. Um, but uh, those are due today. So if you're if you're still trying to help with that, be sure to get that in so we can get those out. Um, young adult ministry Tuesday, August sixth, from six to eight thirty. That is uh, Tuesday, August sixth. That's going to be at the Jacksons. Um, that's coming up, so uh, be able to hang out for that. But uh, on that note, we have a lot of classes. Yes, worship's at 1030, but at 930, Bible class. Uh, just a little plug for Bible class. Um, plenty of classes, plenty of teachers for all ages, so uh, be able to sure sure come for Bible class and hear some more lessons. Um, back to school, ice cream, social, I kind of mentioned that, but that's next Sunday at 6 p.m. There is a sign-up sheet in the foyer. Um, I, I mentioned it last week, but homemade ice cream. If you make homemade ice cream, your name better be back there on that foyer, in that, on that list, okay? Um, but uh, a couple baby showers coming up, Rebecca Russell um, and Megan Murray. Um, those are both August 10th. But Rebecca's um, has a location change. That is now at the VA Senior Center. Um, there's details in the foyer on that. So Rebecca Russell's baby shower, um, August 10th, and that's now at the VA Senior Center. And then uh, Megan Murray's is at the home of Ashley McKinney, and there's details in that, um, details about that in the foyer as well. Um, one more announcement, uh, family game night, Saturday, August 17th at the church building. And um, that's a fun time. We come up here, there's tables set up, play games, hang out, laugh. There's a lot of joy, but uh, bring your favorite snack and bring your favorite game. And uh, that's just a fun time. There's a lot of service opportunities, but uh, not only with our church, but also um, in our own lives, um, just getting out and spreading his word and sharing his love. But uh, that's the last announcement, and then a uh, closing song and a closing prayer. Thank you all for the wonderful singing this morning. It's been uplifting. I was not able to be here last week, but I listened. So it's always nice to be here. We're going to sing all four verses of A Higher Ground. I'm pressing on the upward way, new heights I'm gaining every day, still praying as I onward bound, Lord plant my feet on higher ground, Lord lift me up and let me stand, by faith on heaven's table land. Plain that I have found, Lord, plant my feet on higher ground. My heart has no desire to stay where doubts arise and fears dismay. 
Though some may dwell where these abound, my prayer, my aim is higher ground. Lord, lift me up and let me stand by faith on heaven's table land, a higher plane that I have found. Lord, plant my feet on higher ground. I want to live alone of all, though Satan's dark at me are hurled. For faith has caught the joyful sound, the song of saints on higher ground. Lord, lift me up and let me stand by faith on heaven's table land, a higher plane that I have found. Lord, plant my feet on higher ground. I want to scale the utmost height and catch a gleam of glory bright. But still I'll pray till heaven I found. Lord, lead me on to higher ground. Lord, lift me up and let me stand by faith on heaven's table land, a higher plane that I have found. Lord, plant my feet on higher ground. I have one more announcement, and I'm blaming Nolan because he texted it to me, and I responded. I was like, yeah, absolutely, I'll announce it, and then I just put my phone in my pocket, and I didn't pull it back out. Um, but uh, next Sunday morning after worship, so August 11th, next Sunday morning after worship, there's a care group meeting. And that's going to be for those um, care group leaders or those that want to be care group leaders. It's going to be a real quick meeting uh, here. You want that in the building? Okay. Uh, but uh, after services next Sunday morning, um, if you are a care group leader or you're wanting to be a care group leader, be sure to stick around and just kind of hang out for a quick meeting. And uh, but sorry, Nolan, I forgot. Hasn't it been a great day to be here and? Shannon, wherever you went, uh, what an outstanding lesson, timely, and something we all need to uh, own and uh, take to heart. Thank you so much for that. Let's close with prayer. Father, we are so grateful for the opportunity to assemble here. We're thankful for those who are visiting us, uh, those who have recently placed membership. Father, we're just so uh, thankful. Uh, for the family feel that we celebrate here, that we enjoy so much. And, and we just pray, Father, that our, our visitors feel welcomed, uh, feel fed, and uh, feel the desire to uh, continue and uh, enjoy the fellowship with us. Father, so thankful for this uh, special worship that we've enjoyed today and for everyone who has contributed to it in any way. Thank you for Ryan and, and Warren for Howie's message, for, for Peyton, and of course for Shannon's lesson. Father, help us to embrace our purpose and help us to go and share the good news in every, in every opportunity that we have. And Father, we are concerned and, and uh, aware of the upheaval uh, in our country and the rampant disrespect and prejudice and intolerance, irreverence, and hate, and all other forms of, of evil that just seem to be so prevalent these days. Father, I pray that you'd help us to live our lives and help us to worship you in a way that your love shines forth through us and in a way that shows that your glory uh, is our number one priority. Father, help us to earnestly desire to know and to fulfill what your will is for us 
in this life and the time that we have here. Father, I pray that you'll help us, help this congregation to be a beacon of light and hope to the community around us and be with all of our, uh, those of our number, Father, who are sick, those who are hurting, those who are facing surgery and recovering surgery and we just pray, Father, for their peace and comfort and quick healing and quick return to us. Father, protect us from this uh, extreme uh, period of heat uh, and keep us safe in all things, Father. Forgive us of our sins. It's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen.